Yo, we have a winner. A deer hit this car. And there's the evidence. We're going to have some wiring issues. We're going to have a condenser radiator issue, some brackets, core support issue, um, bumper. The hood, of course, is trash. The hood hinges are bent. I'm going to try to make this work. Person wants me to fix this headlight and make it work. It's a very low mileage car. I figured I could just find another vehicle with the same paint coat and just get all the parts off of the same car. But this was actually a really hard color to find in decent shape. Everything that Junkyards listed as a grade A part wasn't even a grade A part. I don't even think they know what a grade A part is anymore. I'm going to see how much coolant is left in this thing. Looks like I have a Phillips screw in this hole right here. There should be some fender clips in here, but it looks like um, they're all gone for whatever reason. Found some 10 millimeters for this bottom panel I'm taking off. Got some plastic drama here. Oh yeah. I have some fog light stuff I need to deal with. Get some bulbs unplugged and some lighting. I guess the other side just blew right out. It went flying. The victim couldn't find it anywhere. I'm probably going to have to get a bulb connector for this because it's gone. Screw, screw, screw. There's usually a 10 millimeter hiding in here. Wow. More deer hair. How did the hair get way up here? Oh, I hope there's no body parts up in here. I don't smell any body parts. Wow. Few more 10 millimeters. Well, that was special. Ten millimeters in hiding. Nice. You, what's going on here? More broken stuff. Nice. I bet that one wasn't in the estimate. I think this thing comes right off, you know. Oh. Well, I wasn't wrong. How the heck did deer hair get all the way up in here? Wow. The poor deer. It won't be with us anymore. I think I'm going to need one of these. No fixing that. Anytime I see spots like this with bent and crimped wires, I got to pull this loom apart and make sure none of these wires are broken. This is just for the horn, but still, I'm going to peel all this out and make sure it's good. Oh, these are 13 millimeters. 
amazingly enough, the bumper, it hasn't bent at all, and um, neither has the frame. The frame rails are nice and straight, so that gear just came right up the top. And Got another wire that's still attached down here. There's obviously no charge in this condenser. Okay, I was wrong. Time to take a shower. Well, that was fun. I'm all spit shine and polished now. Floor's a little greasy. Anytime you have an accident like that where your AC refrigerant just blows out, you need to get out of the building as fast as you can, air it all out. Don't come back in until all that Freon's gone because you don't want to be breathing that stuff. The reason why I'm doing this job too is because they got an estimate on this car. It's actually a really nice, low mileage, clean car. And the estimate at the collision shop to get this fixed with full coverage exceeded half the price of the blue book value of the vehicle. So they just decided to junk it and um, salvage it basically. And then, and then I told the owner to buy the car back and fix it. So. He bought the car back after they salvaged the title and now I'm fixing it for a lot less than what a collision shop would do it for. It's not going to look perfect but it's still going to be a good car that he can drive for a long time. Looks like there's little tabs for this that I need to pull up on and push in, pull up. I think you got to take this whole bumper cover off to get this condenser out anyways if you were going to do the job. I'm going to cap off these holes just from getting air from entering in the system. That should seal it off good enough. I got to replace this. It's all busted up. There's a 10 millimeter here that I can see. There's one more 10 millimeter hiding right here. There it goes. Get as many of these plastic connectors off as I can. Time for the radiator. Little connectors here. There's tabs that you just pull out on. Now I think I just gotta remove the upper and lower radiator hoses and I can get this radiator out. Looks like there's some transmission lines that are in a seriously bad spot. So I'm going to take this battery out, 10 millimeters on it. I'm probably going to get a new battery for this. In fact, I know I'm going to need get a new battery for this. So I'm just going to pick this thing up out of here with a pair of pliers because that's how I like to do things. Looks like I'm going to have to get this battery tray out to get at these lines. A couple of clips here and there. 13 millimeters all over the place. Now well, that I got this battery tray out, I'm going to try to get these transmission lines off. I'm pretty sure that was the easy one. Boy, if you don't have a two-foot pair of players for this, you're going to have a heck of a time getting this one off. Here, I got that one off. The hose clamp for the lower radiator hose is right on top of that line. Probably make my life a whole lot easier if I take this lower radiator hose off from the thermostat housing. Then I'll try to just squirrel the whole hose out through the hole. Wow, the clamp thing actually worked. The clippy clamp thing. 
get in here with a hook tool and loosen this hose up. Looks like there's a little clamp on this fan too I gotta take off. There, that came off. Get this clamp off on the upper radiator hose. If I have all kinds of luck on my side, I should be able to take this out of here. Hope I don't have to do a radiator of one of these anytime soon. Take some plastic clips off of this thing. I don't even think they're not holding anything on here anymore. These were probably for the grill, I'm guessing. Oh, there's a lot of junk on this car. That's for I don't know what. Wow. There's a wire loom running across the top of the fan. I'm going to try to take as many connectors off of that as I can. Jesus, they're everywhere. Got this wire loom off so it's flopping in the breeze. I got a hood cable I gotta deal with. It's attached to the hood release, of course. I don't know who these Nissans are in cahoots with nowadays, but there's 12s and 13 millimeters on this. These are 12 millimeters. Seriously, now I can take this core support out with the fans. Bunch of 13 millimeters everywhere. Oh no, I got more AC junk in my way. Ah, ah. One more 10 millimeter on this AC line. Oh, that don't like me. I'm going to use an impact. It'll come right off then. Get in here with a screwdriver and try to pry these apart. Now the big dumb thing should come off. Nice. I'm going to cap these lines off. I have some wires here that kind of got pinched a little. I'm going to sort through these really well and make sure none of them are bad. Make sure they're all okay. There was no check engine light on and the thing actually ran so it's probably fine. Looks like just one side of this fan is cracked off. One little piece. I'm going to call this a good enough fan and use it. Little tabs just slide up on it. I don't think that's going anywhere. I'm having issues with the used radiator and condenser on this car, so I ordered new ones. This junkyard stuff, man, I tell you sometimes. I got a headlight from the junkyard too. And they actually buffed the lens to make it look good, and all the tabs were broken off and re-glued. So I wasn't having any of that. I found a sort of fit part, and I'll put this on. I just got the paint coat on the door, and I had Napa make me up a little jar. These are only like seven bucks. It matches. Pretty good stuff for six bucks. Give me little brushes with it. And that's about the extent of my body work. I have new radiator and new condenser. Looks like I don't have to use the factory plastic clippy things for the four corners for this because they have their own tabs on here already. That's kind of cheesy. Kind of flops around in here a little bit. That's kind of really cheesy. What do I do? 
This condenser obviously came with a new receiver dryer. There's a bolt on the top of it. And I got a pressure switch I took off of the original. Before I put that pressure switch on though, I'm going to add some oil in here. This thing blew up in my face, so I would call that a large leak. Normally a large leak, you'd want to add about two to three ounces of oil. And um, a small condenser like this, when you replace it, you want to add an ounce. So it's a five ounce system, I think, and I'm just going to add three ounces of PEG 46 with dye oil, and I'm just going to dump it right down in this hole. Then I can put a little lubricant on this oil seal. I'll use the original. Yeah, I can feel that O-ring crushing on there, so it should seal up really nice. 15 16 wrench is about the right size for this. Then I'll just try to put these radiator hoses on the same way I took them off. Yeah, I think that's ready to go back in. Now I just got to deal with them transmission lines and some wires and hoses and that'll all be backed up normal, whatever that's supposed to mean. He's getting a new battery so I'm soaking the battery terminals and baking soda and water to get the corrosion off of them. I got a vacuum pump now and I made this apparatus. I just put a vacuum line on the cold side and a ball valve because I can open this up and I can make vacuum on it for 20 minutes and then I can turn that ball valve off and I can leave it sit for 20 minutes and make sure it holds vacuum really nice and I just set this up this way because I don't want to be taking off the lines on my on my AC gauges and tank all the time just to evac the system and there's a hose you can get too that I can put in the manifold but you put it in this port in the manifold but every time I do it sucks all the damn fluid out of the out of this hose and I just want to leave that alone so I made this separate I'm just gonna let this run for 20 minutes and it's gonna pull vacuum and I'm gonna hold it and make sure there's no more leaks there shouldn't be there wasn't any leaks to begin with did the baking soda trick with all these parts too. Oh, I suppose I can put all this stuff back in. I'll put the negative on after I get the rest of this job done. I'll do the bumper next. I got this whole thing from the junkyard with the brackets and everything on it. Well that looks kind of normal. Then I have these goofy brackets and it's got this goofy other bracket that goes on here and slides in this pin and gets bolted down so it so it can squish in between this fender somehow. The junkyard actually tried to charge me for horns. They thought they had value, so I'm going to use the original ones. They are not broke, so they should work. Plastic bumper thing. Only goes on one way, it says up on it. Put a little brake cleaner on a rag and I'm going to hit these bulbs just to make sure there's no oil and contaminants on them. Because if there are, it'll make hot spots on these fog light bulbs and they'll blow out. I got a used color match grade A bumper that's not really a grade A bumper and uh, it was supposed to come with a grill and it didn't so I had to get one of those. But I got it all together. Cover. Cover. 
I have some child proofing on this transmission dipstick cap. It's a tube with no dipstick. I gotta try to find a way to get this thing off of here. There's a little tab in here that I gotta move to get this out. And it's really damn dumb because they don't want anybody getting in here and doing any transmission service to this car apparently oh there we go i stuck a hook tool in here and i see i moved that tab that came out i got on the inside of this bar i don't know how much i need so i'm going to overfill it it's all cvt transmission fluid um I'm just going to overfill it, so I'm, I'm going to put a half a quart in it, and that should be way too much. Let's put the childproof cap back on. Have some new clips for this because they were gone for some reason. I got these two pieces too, they got blasted off the car. I suppose I'll start with this one. There's a big chunk taken out of this air cleaner. But it's just the fresh air. I don't feel any plastic in there or anything. So I'm just going to stick it in the hole. It should be good enough stuff. It looks like there's supposed to be some amazing bracket for this, this washer tube that is gone. So, uh, I don't know. I'm just going to leave it like that and let the victim deal with it. Maybe he can find the part. Looks like a little button or something is busted on this. It'll be good enough. I'm going to call that good enough. This goes on here somehow. Yeah, this thing just blew right off. The hood and the hinges are still at the victim's house. I'm going to need help putting that on, so I'm just going to drive this to his house like this and get it there, and then we'll put it on. I got some Global Lifetime coolant I'm going to put in here. Got the ball valve off on this, and it's been holding vacuum for about two hours. It's still really good. So I'm just going to pop this off. I got the high pressure port right here. I'm going to zero this and I got to add 18 ounces. So let's say I have one pound, two ounces. I'm just going to turn it on the cold side. See if this tank can take it all. There it is, one pound, two ounces, so that should be filled. I don't have to do anything else to that. This is pretty much filled. I'm still going to end up burping the system, but there's, there's nothing in the overflow. So I'm going to cap this off. I'm going to fill this overflow up. I think it's time to hook up the negative terminal. I'm going to hose it down a little with some lubricant junk. Assholes can't build a car where you change a battery without having problems. I got to mess with the key and try to make that turn off. Well, I did all of that. There's still a problem, assholes. Well, it took forever to warm this car up. It's right at about 160 degrees. So I'm going to pull this 14 millimeter plug. It's really not that tight. Probably about I don't know, 20 foot pounds maybe. I'm going to pull this out and I'm going to let fluid run out of this and it'll go from a pour to a light pour and then I'm going to throw the plug back in it. See it's pouring out real nice. There, that's good enough. It's just kind of dribbling now. That should be right where I want it. I don't trust this whole check transmission fluid without a dipstick either, so I'm actually going to measure how much fluid I took out of there and make sure it's 
pretty close to what I put into it. Doing this job, we had a problem with this Y in the washer. It was all plugged up, and this whole time I'm thinking Nissan's in bed with the Germans because a lot of this stuff seemed like it was German because there was 13 millimeters in here. Look at this. Sweden. So um, Saab went out of business, and now uh, Nissan's in bed with the Swedes. What's up with that? I got a little help with the hood. That wasn't fun. And it's a job. Okay, bye.